Hello everybody, this is Razor Game Dev, and welcome to the next episode, and let's make a platformer in Love 2D. So to kick things off, I'm just going to run it right here, show you what we got so far. Um, so it didn't happen this time, but occasionally uh, when, when my computer is running slow, or when the game stutters, um, I'll fall through the ground, right? When, as soon as we load the game, I'll fall through the ground. Now the reason why this happens is because... Um, in the beginning of the game, it's loading all these resources, it's looping, it's, it's adding all these tiles, and it's kind of slow, it's creating a lot of garbage, so it has to clean it up, and it, it slows down the game, so as the player is falling through the ground, it doesn't have enough time to check the player, um, his position and everything, so he just falls straight through, and the same will happen with the enemy. So to fix that, we're just going to do a little fix, we're going to say um, uh, love.timer.sleep, and we're going to add half a second, or a quarter of a second, rather, um, in there. So what this will do is, after it loads the tile and the image, it will sleep, it won't, nothing will happen for a quarter of a second, and then it'll run our game, and it'll run the player physics. And that gives it just enough time to, uh, to do some thinking. And later we'll add a uh, loading module and everything to make things work even better. But this is how we're going to do it for now, and hopefully that will work. If it doesn't work for you, then um, you either cre increase the time, or... Yeah. Um, anyway. So, what we're going to do today is we're going to... Actually, let's run this again. My bad. Uh, what we're going to do today is work on the zombie physics and the zombie AI. So, um, he, as you can see, when he falls down onto here, he, he's not smart enough to jump up. So, to make him smart enough, what we need to do is um, check if there's a solid right there. If there's a solid right there, then we need to check if there's a solid right there. If not, then we'll uh, call the jump function and the zombie will jump onto that tile. And we'll do that for both left and right. So, to do that, we need to create a function in... Uh, the Tom map loader. So we're going to name it TLM um, is solid at position X comma Y. So if you remember, the uh, the solids are on layer 3. So let's create a local reference to that. So let's say self.tiles um, we're going to say 3 for layer 3. Um, next, we want to check if there's a solid at tile 3. So if, or I mean at is if there's a solid at these coordinates. So say if solids y, x, remember we index the y and then index the x, is not equal to nil, then return true. So if it's not equal to nil, then it will be a solid, it will be a table. So we want to return true, stating that there is a solid at that position. Else we're going to return false. So that function should work. Um, I'm also going to add a print for debugging, uh, solid at pose. So let's go over to the uh, zombie, and let's see. So after update physics, well, actually before update, no, I'll do it after. We're going to check uh, solid at position. So, sorry guys, I had to take a quick uh, quick cut. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to create some local variables. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our position, divide it by the tile size, and floor it. So um, so that we can see exactly where we are in the tile map. So we're going to say x pose. We're going to make that equal to... Uh, let's actually create a local reference. to. Actually, we do have a local floor. Okay, so floor. We're going to say uh, self.position.x divided by tile size, which is 16. Let me check if we have a constant for tile size. Um, we don't. So let's create a constant for tile size. Um, so we're going to name it tile size. We're going to make it 16. And we do this just in case we want to ever upscale our game or something, so we don't have to replace a whole bunch of these variables. Um, we Basically, you don't want to hard code very much. If you can avoid it, do, um, do it. Okay, so let's say local y position. It's equal to floor self.position.y divided by tile size. Boom. So now if we run this, we're going to see um, actually, before let's let's before we run it, let's print x position and y position. Okay. So now if we run, we see the position um, relative to the uh, relative the position of the zombie according to its coordinates. So now, if one thing I should mention, you know how it, um, the game looks really laggy right now. The reason why it's really laggy is because we're spamming the. Uh, the console and spamming the console every frame makes it well it will lag it out pretty bad okay so now that we have the position let's check if TLM uh, 
is solid um, at position x pose and y pose then so now we're checking if it's um, at the y position right if, if there's a solid at the tile position and we're going to subtract one from the x position now I'm just going to print out ouch so let's test that so that means that we're going to take the current position of the zombie right we're going to um, turn it into coordinates that we can index into the map um, we're going to check if the x coordinate if that minus one um, if there's a solid at the position so let's check it okay so we have an error uh, it's not called okay so it does it's, it's not capitalized this really messes me up is I I'm working on this other project in uh, Corona SDK and my naming convention is completely different than this one this is I've actually I've, I've changed a lot of things so okay so we're not getting something um, we're not getting a, uh, a message so let me add one there and if this doesn't work I'll do some debugging and I'll get back to you okay there we go okay so you see um, if you add one since it's rate I guess um, because it's um, the we're actually drawing the square at the corner um, the reference rate would be right there so we need to add one so that's right there so that I can access that right there I hope that doesn't really make any sense sorry um, I'll try to explain that in a little bit more detail later okay so that works so we get left side so let's say let's just jump so let me if if I remember yeah physics jump self let me check um, physics helper no world physics so jump just takes the object okay good 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 and we're gonna do the same thing for the right side now our map doesn't really test right side very well um, because of how it's built but anyway so if you see them yeah they're ooh, okay that was weird so he's jumping he's not moving though I wonder why so um, let me, we don't want to subtract one from here because remember we're indexing the corner here we do want to add one though I believe so he'll go right up to the wall and jump there we go he will however fall off the edge so um, to fix that I'm just gonna actually let's uh let's go into the tiled map after I edited the map I kind of just broke everything um, I just wanted to show you this because it's man it's alright guys I'm back so I've been having some troubles getting my new map to load um, and the trouble started with uh, well the way we were loading quads so I basically had a table and I was hard coding every single quad in and that was no good um, the reason why it was no good is because I went to a second line so if you look at the image uh, right here um, you'll notice that we have we have two lines of tiles right um, each separated by one pixel so basically I, I don't want to write have to write 256 tiles by hand so to fix that what we need to do is actually create a little, little function here so we're gonna name it function oh first of all delete all the quads that are in the quads table right here here I'm gonna name it gen quads this function and I'm just gonna call it right here this will get its own class someday uh, we'll probably put it in the asset manager but for now we're not gonna worry about it so next we want to loop through all the tiles so we're gonna say for I or for all the quads is equal to one comma um, now remember that we're, we're not we, we, there's 16 by 16 tiles but they're separated by one pixel and we do that to avoid oversampling so we don't have these weird lines in our game um, so what we want to do is we want to say floor um, floor uh, I want to say 256 divided by 17 do because that's the the tile size plus the um, plus the uh, the extra pixel so next is do the same thing for J so J is equal to I or equal to 1 comma floor uh, let's copy that there we go boom that did not work let me try it again there we go all right so yeah um, so for J is equal to 1 comma floor 256 divided by 17 do now my caps locks on all right so in here what we want to do is we want to uh, 
insert a new quad. So table dot insert into the quads. We're going to insert a quad, and quad is just a local variable for uh, Lovda graphics that new quad. So the x and y coordinate right here for the quad, we want to say is we want to start with x. So we're going to say 16, or actually 17 times j minus 17. Over here, we're going to say 17 times i minus 17. Next is tile size 16 by 16, and the, the entire sheet size 256 by 256. And that should do it. So let's try this out. If we run it now, um, I have some print statements right here. Uh, that's not it right here. Because it's debugging this for a while. Um, nothing else should be changed, so after you do this, it should work. Uh, okay, so let's create a local reference to floor because I just I just named it floor. So local floor is equal to math dot floor. Here we go. Let's try it again. If we run this, you see. Okay, so their new map. Um, man, I wish you would stay on the map. Yeah. Okay. No worries. If he falls off the uh, the world, um, he'll try to index a value that's not there. Um, anyway, so look. So you see, he jumps up now, and only on the left side. He doesn't do it on the right side. I don't believe. Um, yeah, so let's, let's go over the zombie and try it on the left side, or the right side now. There we go. Let's look at him jump, boom. Okay, he does it on the left side, of course. Let's try on the right side. No. Okay, let me try. Actually, you know what, since this is, we need to try, um, add two, I believe. I believe I could be wrong. Woo! That lag. Let me try it again. Just let it load a little bit. Man, again. I need to really get around to fixing that. Um, anyway, so he's coming after us. Let's wait for it. He jumps. He jumps a little too soon, so let's add try three. Trial and error, guys. Just try new things, you know. One thing doesn't work, try something else. There we go, that works. And I like that. Um, so I have some testing platformers over here, and as you can see, he falls. So to check, uh, we want to check the ground. So let's try the left side. Or actually, let's try the right side first. So if this, if um, the solid over there plus one right here. So if in the ground, if there's no, no solid, if not, uh, actually, I can't do that, can I? Not, then we want to jump. So, okay, so let me uh, explain this. If there's, if to the right, plus down one, if there's no tile, then he'll jump. Now, there might be some unwanted side effects. For instance, as he, if he falls, well, that's unwanted. Let me close that out. Open run. Hopefully that doesn't happen. There we go. So, watch as he falls down, like this side, he'll be jumping like crazy. But at least this works. And... What we need to do is add an and statement and check one thing. Well, I guess you can't make it, huh? I guess we just need smaller jumps then for him. But um, Or we can mess around with this physics. But anyway, so he jumps across that side. Now let's try the left side. Um, Position.x, and that should work. Anyway, so... Um, yeah, I'm liking this. So if we increase the speed of the player before we jump, or increase the velocity, or if we just go 150, something pretty pretty fast, um, you'll have no problem clearing that jump over there. You have no problem finding us either. Oh shoot! Woo! -hoo. Okay, so that was fun. Okay, so yeah, we have very standard physics right here. Um, the last thing I wanted to fix was the camera. Um, I'll come back to you. I, I want to mess around with some stuff so you don't have to see it on um, on camera. Um, and I'll come back to you when I figure something out. Okay, I'm back. So, yeah, I, I figured out something that works. Um, so, okay, so what we want to do right now is let's zoom in the camera. And let's see what happens. So, if you remember with our code, we it was broken when we zoomed in the camera. Um, it didn't quite scale right. It didn't follow the player. It was a little slow. And the reason being is it's zoomed in, right? But it's not accounting for the the scale, so it thinks the player's up here, and he thinks the player's small. Um, so if you look at our camera uh, class right now, this is what we got. So to fix this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do um, uh, we're just gonna do that. And if we if you look at that right now, 
Um, it just it, it doesn't work because it's not. Whoops! He fell to the ground. It's not accounting for the players or the the scale of the screen. See, so that's why it's slow. So what we want to do is we want to actually multiply it by this one over the scale self dot uh, scale dot x. I'm going to do the same thing for y. Now what this does is now it takes the new scale when you scale it right, and it multiplies it by the position right here, which means um, it's now accounting for the new world uh, physics. And as you can see, the top uh, the camera follows the top corner of the player, which it should. Which means all we have to do now is subtract half the screen width, divide by two, and half the screen height. Because remember, these are two constants that we, uh, or they're not constants, we might add screen resizing, but um, two values that we start at the beginning here. So now let's run. And you can see that it follows the player directly in the center. Actually, not directly. It's a little off from the center, but we can fix that a little bit later. Um, it just it accounts for the player's height. So yeah, he jumped off the edge. If he if he jumps off the edge, then uh, the zombie will die. Um, so last change right now. Um, I feel like this video is getting pretty long. So let's go to world physics. As you can see, when he fell off the edge, um, he just yeah. If 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 it will try to look through the table even though there's no value there. So what I want to say is right here is if well actually let's go to X. Um, let's go to I. So let's do a couple of checks and just clamp these values. If I is greater than 256, then I no actually map size is 64. Then actually let's make a let's make a constant. I'm saying actually a lot map size that way because I might want to change it to larger theoretically you can have as large as we want on um, world right now so it's greater than map size then I is equal to map size and if J is greater than map size then J is equal to map size and that way it shouldn't crash when we jump off the edge now. In the game, you'll never be able to jump off the edge, but this is just in case. Yeah, so you can see it doesn't crash and will fall forever. So yeah, this is what we got today. Um, we got an AI. He's really, really fast when the speed kicks in. Over here, bud. He's kind of stupid. Um, we'll work on making him smarter later, maybe even adding A star. Uh, but he's super simple. So let's go over here. Yep, there he goes. And he just jumps off the edge. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Um, okay, so it's still doing it. Whatever, we'll fix it in the next tutorial. So, yeah, thank you everybody for watching. Um, hopefully this video wasn't too segmented. I did do a bunch of cuts and everything. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not planning these out. So I'm, I'm actually, you know, programming with you. So when there's an error or something, I have to, fi I'm either fixing it on camera or